Hey everyone and welcome to week four. I hope you all enjoyed ceramics in week three. I know I enjoyed recording it for you. Um, so this week we're on to lithics. Um, while to some they may not sound like much, um, they can be some of the most complicated things to draw. So without further ado, let's get into week four and lithics. So in today's lecture, we will talk about lithics. What are they? What I like to call the black sheep of the artifact illustration family. Um, simple in concept, complicated in practice. Um, specifically, we'll look at flint tools, um, flaked tools, um, and then follow along with me as I set up a drawing of a flake tool for you. So with ceramics and uh, metals, especially finely crafted ones, um, it's hard to showcase or even point out the work that goes into it. However, with lithics, especially flaked tools, you can see nearly every mark. Um, flaked tools, as we'll be focusing on today, are uh, very complicated to draw, so we better get into it. So what are lithics? Um, lithics are artifacts uh, made out of stone. They can include, but are certainly not limited to, projectile points, um, hand axes, and scrapers uh, and knives. They can be made out of materials like flint, as it's referred to here in the UK and Europe, um, chert, um, as it's more specifically uh, referred to as the very specific type of rock um, in North and South America, um, obsidian, and even sometimes jade. Um, not all of these are flaked tools, of course, but for this week's lecture, we will focus on flaked tools as they can be the most complicated to illustrate. Um, in order to illustrate a flake tool, it's helpful to kind of understand how they are made um, and the different parts of the tool. Um, so flake tools are often made using the technique called flint napping. Um, they have several parts. Um, there is the core, the material used to make the tool, um, the striking platform, and the point of percussion. So these tools are made when striking or applying pressure to one surface uh, called the striking platform or a piece of material at the core. Uh, so once this has been done um, the first time, the flake now has an interior or ventral surface formed by its removal uh, from the core, as well as an exterior or dorsal surface, which was originally part of um, the core. So the platform part of the flake is what is referred to as the proximal end, um, the other, the distal end. So the ventral surface is where you can usually make out um, the bulb of percussion. So once the initial piece is struck off, you will have what are called flakes. Um, and on the cortex, you will have what are called flake scars. So the more has, the tool has been worked, and depending on the quality of materials and the skill of the maker, you um, may have more or less flake scars. Um, also, as a note, the angle between the striking platform and the exterior surface of a flake is hardly ever more than 90 degrees, um, and as no flake can really be removed from a flat surface, um, the point of percussion is usually at the edge of most core and flaked tools. When drawing flaked tools, there are some regional differences, just as with uh, ceramics. So there's a method called the unfolded box method, um, and the orientation of the tool is changed um, as can be seen here in the drawing, I have kind of just turned <laughs> um, as the US standard. Um, and then here in the UK standard um, of the horizontal um, unfolded box. So in the US also the exterior, because of the orientation, the exterior or dorsal side is going to be drawn first um, as opposed to the UK or European standard where the um, ventral or interior surface is drawn first. Here I have kind of broken down um, a flake tool illustration into three parts for you um, and I will kind of talk through it as we're watching the video. I've sped it up a little bit because um, we don't have time to watch me sit for um, an hour and draw this unfortunately and it's not even finished. 
So when setting up an illustration, you will start um, the unfolded box with the ventral surface. Of course, that's in the UK and um, kind of roll the object to the right, um, drawing uh, each side um, and both the proximal and distal surfaces. So the um, artifact will be oriented with the proximal end on the bottom and the distal end pointed upward. So it helps um, in the beginning, as I'm showing here, to draw out with hash marks where these boxes would be, just so that your spacing is correct. Um, you also should have a line underneath um, so your drawing ends up symmetrical across the page. Um, in order to get the correct size for the boxes, you should measure your artifact, always measuring with archaeological illustration. So once you have the basic shape um, and page set up, you can start to add in the flake scars. Um, here it's useful to use calipers to measure the flake scars. Um, so for the sake of time, I have just uh, eyeballed it, um, not really measuring them or where they are in relation to the edges of the artifact. Um, so it's okay to trace along the edges as long as you're looking directly down at the artifact and it doesn't move. Um, a lot of the time I have to stand up to get a good drawing angle. Um, this is also true with ceramics and metals, unless you're working at a drafting table, which is very handy, um, which I do not have currently. I'm hoping to get one soon. So as always, don't forget to orient the light from a 45 degree angle from the left um, and always include a scale bar. I know that most of the time flake tools will not be scaled up or down as they're usually small or large enough to fit on your page and to be able to see what you need um, to what you need to for the purposes of the illustrations. However, for accuracy um, and continuity, the scale bar should uh, still be included. Flake tools can be some of the most time consuming to draw um, just because of the amount of flake scars. Um, and you know, tiny lines from the working of the tool. Um, so here I have gone back um, in to add more detail um, and stippling to show the bits of the core um, because that's how we show the bits of the core that are still present is through um, stippling so that it's clear that it is not the same um, sort of surface as the flake scars. Um, so some technical stuff. Each flake scar should be outlined um, unless an experienced illustrator um, has done the illustration as you will see. Sometimes the drawings are quite rudimentary, um, just outline and lines for the position of the flake scars. Um, in the illustration, the 3D shape should um, not be the only thing that's indicated, but usually the point of percussion should also be marked by just little like tick marks. Um, usually there's like a small key that says what each of the lines are for. Um, unless your specifications or your purpose of your illustration do not call for it. Uh, so the shading lines on the flake scars should indicate the direction of the flaking. As you can see, I haven't outlined every single flake scar. Um, like I said, this whole thing took me about an hour and it's not even, you know, um, halfway completed. Also, this flaked tool that I'm working with, um, it does belong to me, um, rightfully. <laughs> uh, it doesn't have as many flake scars. It's actually pretty smooth uh, for its size. It's a little bit um, rudimentary of a tool. As you can see, the flake scars are pretty big. It's not like finely worked or anything, um, but it doesn't have as many flake scars as uh, some flaked tools you will see. It also depends on the material that you're working with. So just one last picture of a different kind of flake tool. Um, this is one I did a while ago. It's not like technically accurate, um, but it was when I was first starting out trying to get the feel for it because these drawings can take a really long time. Um, it can take a while to kind of get the hang of the shapes and how pieces of the flint or, you know, whatever material your tool is made out of um, flake off um, because it's a little different depending on the material that you have to work with. This flaked tool was slightly bigger than the one that I own. Um, it was part of a collection I was allowed to practice on. So uh, we went through that a little bit fast, um, but you can always go back and watch the videos. Lithics are very fun to draw. They're very hard. They're very technical. Um, 
it's not particularly my area of expertise, uh, but I hope I got you guys all the basics. Um, and as always, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask me. And next week we will be working on stratigraphy, which might be a more uh, practical use of archaeological illustration for some of you. Um, I know I have definitely used it several times in the field, um, and it's also one that kind of sneaks up on you. It's not as simple as it sounds. So uh, thanks for joining me for week four for lithics, and I'll see you guys next week for stratigraphy.